Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I've got a question for you today. It has come to my attention that in the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, General Assembly Minutes, which is the uh, bylaws or constitution, if you will, of the said church, that as of 2012, a state overseer, a state administrative bishop can excommunicate a local church member if the church member is deemed disruptive or troublesome or bothersome according to the doctrines and behavior and discipline of the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. I find that very interesting because one of the biggest, if not the biggest, mission in the church is missions, winning souls, winning souls to Christ. So I wonder how you can have a provision to where if there's a troublesome or troublesome members that a pastor deems troublesome, and, and that's objective, you know, this one, maybe he believes it, maybe he's doing something wrong, maybe he's not, but how can you have a situation where a pastor can deem members troublesome or disruptive, or uh, uh, going against the doctrines or whatever the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, and he can let the state overseer, his superior, know, and that, that overseer, that state administrative bishop, can write a letter without due process, without coming down the scene necessarily, just on the pastor's word, write a letter to excommunicate that member, those members, and there is an appeal process. Let me share that. Now watch this. You ready for this? The appeal process is something like this. That member can appeal to the executive committee, which is the kind of five-member board at Cleveland, Tennessee. They can appeal that decision by the overseer. And then that executive committee will say yay or nay <laughs> to whatever is going on. Now, you got to know when you do that, the fix is already in. Okay, because here you have a pastor, for example, who may or may not have dealt with those members properly, given them due process. Again, it doesn't matter whether he's right or wrong, but again, due process. And then if he says, you know what, I'm not going to deal with it, I'm going to give it to the overseer. The old state, state overseer, the old state overseer, he said, goes on his word, writes them a letter, excommunicates them from the church, and then the executive committee, they're going to back up the state overseer. So the fix is in. Now, here's the problem with that, because the Church of God has over 6.5 million members, easily, probably, probably 7 million now. Uh, the organization's been around over 100 some odd years. And uh, so you can imagine how many letters they probably get of complaining local church members about their pastor, about their district overseer, about their state bishop, about the weather, about the, 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 the kitchen fellowship hall that's still not finished. I mean, they, I'm sure they get bombarded with inquiries from local church members. So do you really think that, that that council of five men, or even the council of 18, which is the next step down, um, would take the time to <laughs> to respond individually to all those uh, letters with doing an investigation, with doing uh, you know, uh, proper process, due process? Of course not. They're going to take their leader that they're going to back up word, and that leader more than likely is going to back up the pastor. Well, when your mission is, and your purpose is, as a church organization, to win souls to Christ, win the loss at any cost. They sing that song all the time. And the Church of God, to their, to their uh, you know, I give them props. Missions department is huge. Evangelist department is huge. But here's the thing. Don't you think it'd be a little counterproductive or counterintuitive that you're winning all these souls to Christ, they join a church, they're part of a church, but then if you don't agree with what we say, if you don't go along with what we say, we're going to excommunicate you. We're going to put you out. Now, doesn't that go against the mission of Christ? I mean, the woman was caught in adultery. <laughs> and Jesus didn't put her out. Those people, those men, the accusers wanted to put her out. But they didn't put her out. He said, woman, what? Where are thine accusers? So how is it that we could be an organization that wins souls, but then at the same time, if that soul doesn't line up to what we say, if we have a legitimate disagreement, 
then we say good night, goodbye. For example, let's just say for for an example, for example, for example, uh, 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 let's say you have a disruptive group of four or five members who are deemed disruptive. I'll say it like that by the pastor. So the pastor wants to remove them, but he didn't have the guts. Now, this is just for example, he didn't have the guts to do it himself. So what he does, he invokes his state overseer in uh, his state administrative mission. And if you happen to get a putrescent, narcissistic, arrogant, tyrannical state overseer, state administrative bishop, for example, uh, that is on some type of egotistical trip and power trip, he does all the work for what the pastor and the church board would do, for, for, for example. And he decides to write a letter to five different individuals who have been longtime members. For, for example, for example, uh, of a church uh, that's nearly 100 years old, just, you know, for example. And um, even put out one of the five was a follower of the church, not even a member of the church. This is just my example. And by letter, is that the testimony of Christ? Is that the testimony? Is that how now we're in service training and training our leaders? It sets a dangerous precedent. Because if any time a pastor or a state bishop, state overseer can deem somebody being, if they're not following the teachings of the church, well, my Lord, you'd be to put out the whole church. Listen. I really think that the excommunicators need to be excommunicated. The Bible declares that if your brother is overtaken in the fault, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one. Consider yourself. If you're spiritual, you ought not to want to drive anybody from the cross of Jesus. You may not like what they're doing. You may not like what they said. You may not agree with them, reverends. But if you put them out the church, they can't never potentially get it right. I'm really shocked that you would take that position and use that, which clearly I would say would have to have been a last resort, but it looks like it was almost a first resort. Because what if, what if, what if Bishop Quan Miller, or Bishop Thomas Chenault, or Bishop Doyle Scott, or Bishop Wayne Solomon would have put you out, excommunicated you for not paying your tithe the tithes properly? So anyway, subscribe, like, share, spread this video. Put your comments below. If you want to hit me up, info at robcarpenter2.com. You want to message me? Fine. It's all good. Let me hear from you. And again, I think it's time to excommunicate the excommunicators. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm out. Peace.